Well, we're, Eddie Fogler joins me for tonight's games, and you know, I mean, it's no surprise that, that Bob Knight could turn it around, but the manner in which he did so quickly. Well, Bob Knight is a great basketball coach, Tim. Even Miles Brand, president of Indiana University, <laughs> would admit to that. However, he did inherit some good players, particularly Andy Ellis, and uncharacteristically dipped into the junior college ranks to bring talent to Lubbock. But when you consider what Southern Illinois presents, and particularly as a seed, an 11 seed, how many 11 seeds could have a coach that knows so much about Bob Knight? Bruce Weber, 18 years he spent under Gene Cady as an assistant. Well, he was ready for the job at Southern Illinois. 18 years makes Bruce Weber very qualified. But more importantly, Tim, he knows how to guard the outstanding motion offense of Coach Bob Knight. Creighton won here today. Southern Illinois thinks they can win here today. Well, there are a lot of 11 seeds. Even Clark Kellogg made the comment that that's what to watch. Boston College and Southern Illinois tonight. You look at the starting lineups, there is a change. Two outstanding players and front court players. Roland Roberts, one of the most physical players in their league, and Jermaine Dearman are out because of being late for practice on Wednesday back in Carbondale. Now, they'll both play, and probably early, but they are being um, forced to sit early. Mike Wood, Fran Connolly, and Gene Manji, our veteran officiating crew, for tonight's game. You know, you look at these lineups, Eddie, it's noteworthy. Texas Tech has all five starters at 6-5 and over. Conversely, Southern Illinois are 6-7 and under. And particularly with Dearman and Roberts out, they're not very physical. There are four guards on the floor. Well, absolutely. Uh, Texas Tech should just pound the board and also pound the ball inside here early. A little motion on motion. Well, Bruce Weber, although he's a Gene Cady disciple, is playing a Bob Knight motion offense here today. Hairston knocks down a tray. 3 0 Saluki. Hairston, freshman from Fairview Heights, Illinois, Bellevue East High School. And Tim Will Chavis is not starting here today, and Kitsip Powell is playing point guard at 6 7. Going for the matchup advantage. Nice move by Emmett. Two holdovers that he inherited, not only Andy Ellis, but Andre Emmett. Been real factors in Texas Tech turning it around in one year in the Big 12. Kent Williams, a real go-to guy. You look at him and you never know he produces the numbers he does. Driving to the basket, not, not there for Brooks. Stays with it. Doesn't get the roll against the taller Red Raiders of Texas Tech. Nick Valdez in that game. Nice entry pass down low. And the hoop for Kasip Powell. Well, it's obvious Coach Knight taking advantage of the heights here. And Kasip Powell taking a much smaller player inside for an easy hoop. Williams draws the bump and the foul against Powell Storzinski. You look at the story of Texas Tech. Over 22,000 in Lubbock. It's awfully windy there. I know I've spent a lot of time. And it was that way before Knight arrived. And you see this is their 11th NCAA tournament appearance. Southern Illinois brings a little bit more size here with Brad Corn, who's well, he's much more of a perimeter player. Very good three-point shooter at 6-9. Too strong for Williams. He's Southern Illinois' ninth leading career scorer with 1,502 points coming into this game. Oh, on the dribble drive, and again using the size, Powell, but another foul spotted. Player control against Kasit Powell. And for the Salukis, Carbondale, That's Illinois. You know, they've had outstanding years. Clyde Frazier in the 60s. Mike Glenn, the stinger in the 70s, took them to the sweet 16. <laughs> yes, he did. Shared the microphone with him in the past. Hairston, not there. Pulled down and out of there by Valdez, and Andre Emich sets it up. Great interior pass. Missing from point blank range was Powell. Well, the last two or three trips have been very difficult for Kasip Powell. 
These two teams run very similar motion offense. Excellent floor spacing, ball movement, player movement, screening action. Hairston, tough pass and in a lot of traffic. Pulled away by Emmett. Something about any of these coaches, we've got three national championship coaches in this region today and tonight. Howell again, this time he's tied up. He can't get a shot to fall or pick up a foul one way or the other. The arrow to Texas Tech. Nick Valdez, excellent pass back door to Kasip Powell, but the, gets blocked to a jump ball. Southern Illinois is going to have to get more pressure on the basketball to make those passing angles much more difficult to see. That's a walk. And by Emmett. Southern Illinois ball. Roberts is in the game, and so is Jermaine Dearman. So the original starters serve their pennants, and they're back in. Brad Korn is coming to the game, number 13. And the foul goes. I believe it was Valdez, Tim. Yes, it's Nick Valdez with the elbow. You see the first round losses for Knight. You know, I contend that many of those losses were brought on by the controversy he was dealing with off the court with the administration at Indiana. Well, we talked with Coach Knight yesterday and did discuss the, option, the, the, the situation at Indiana, and he certainly was distracted, and perhaps it took away from his preparation with his basketball team. Well, they say the job is hard enough when you're trying to beat an opponent. If you feel the opponent may be someone that should be a teammate, it makes it more difficult. Kent Williams gets caught with the push. I wanted to make this point. It seems as if in three of the four cases, other than Billy Donovan who went out of the final four coaches of the eight here, three of the four took a year's sabbatical. And I asked Coach Knight about that. Does it serve to help you if you're going to be a coach for the long haul to take a year away? He says, well, I can't speak for everyone else. I know this. I enjoyed my year away from basketball. He basically said to Tim, he saw very little basketball during that year off. Watch the spacing, the ball movement, and screening action of Texas Tech's motion offense. Very difficult to guard. Ellis, nice find. Emmett off the back iron. Powell finally gets one to go on the low block. Texas Tech by one. Roberts, very physical player. Outside the Belcher. And the rebound cleared by Valdez, and a turnover. Here's Williams going crossover. Nice move. Kent Williams. Kent Williams can really shoot a basketball, has excellent savvy, really understands what the game's about. Chavis is on the floor. He and Emmett now. Valdez again looking down low for some help. They continue to swing it. Hairston tipped that ball, but Emmett came away with it. And the rebound to Korn, Brad Korn. There's Roberts, tipped away by Ellis. Chavis has numbers, two on one. Oh, Williams ran away from me. He thought he had help, but he didn't. 8-7 Texas Tech. Five minutes gone here at the United Center in Chicago. And Dearman's about to check in here, Tim, and then Southern Illinois will have their best players on the court. Williams. <laughs> Roberts. As if on a pogo stick down there, loose ball, controlled to the Salukis. Five straight lead changes early on. Texas Tech in transition. Eight to seven, Texas Tech with the lead. Tim Brando, Eddie Fogler, and Charles Davis. We're at the United Center in Chicago. I'll tell you, the Missouri Valley has certainly been making a lot of noise, not only this year with Creighton's win, but in past seasons. Virtually every year, the Missouri Valley has a big time story in the opening round. Belcher, not there, and a whistle. As Roberts makes his move for the rebound, he picks up his first. Look at our game summary. Texas Tech going tall against the Saluki small. And the rebounds and the field goal shooting a little better for Texas Tech. 
Southern Illinois is building out this pressure, Tim. They're going to pressure Texas Tech's guards. Texas Tech was not prepared for that full court press. Almost turned the ball over. Here they're double teaming the inbound player. Chavis now operates against Belcher. Ellis. How nice it is to have a 6'11 guy that can step out and bang down jump shots. Tyrese Bowie in the game now, number four for the Salukis. Out of the timeout, his first action, and he'll launch a tray. Long rebound taken down by Shivas. There's the pop out and the rejection by Roberts. You see how athletic he is. Swatting that shot by Storzinski back in his face. They've not been able to get the ball to Dearman in a position to score. And that'll be a foul against Roberts off the ball. Well, we talked to Bob Knight's uh, first round struggle since 95. This is a different team, and um, I believe that uh, refreshing breath of air that he had for a season as it relates to bringing the motion game and the energy and excitement into the Big 12 has been um, good for both, both for the league as well as for Bob Knight. Absolutely, Tim. We visited again with Coach Knight yesterday, and he was very relaxed and really has enjoyed his year at Texas Tech, and his relationship with Gerald Myers, the athletic director, has been a huge plus for his transition there. Myers was a part of the old Southwest Conference in the Shelby Metcalf, Eddie Sutton days, and uh, was once president of the National Association of Basketball Coaches. Longtime friend of Knight's. These teams mirror each other offensively. Bruce Weber is almost running a Bob Knight, Indiana motion game offense here. Here's Dearman trying to create off the bounce. Very athletic move to Brooks. Tremendous find by Dearman. He had sold the shot and gave up the dish. Already seven lead changes in tonight's game. Dorzinski tried to go reversal and couldn't get it to convert. The Salukis and the Red Raiders in the first game of our evening session here in Chicago. Dearman, that's an offensive foul. Player control against Dearman. And Coach Knight seeing Storsinski's flip up under the basket is taking him out, Tim. One mistake by Storsinski, and he is out of the basketball game. Nick Would you say he still has a quick hook? And I don't mean about fishing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that young man did get yanked, if that's what you're asking. Yeah. That hook is for fishing in the offseason for uh, making a change when season is on. Ellis is bumped by Willis. Don't miss any action. Get exclusive audio plus video highlights and detailed play-by-play -play from each game at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online. Enter keyword CBS Sportsline. Andy Ellis in his fifth year here with Texas Tech is much healthier than he's been in the past. He really has blossomed this year and has taken to Coach Knight's coaching extremely well, having a terrific senior season. We asked him yesterday about... Uh, opponents do they since Bob Knight became your coach do you find that opponents are intimidated he said no I uh, I pretty much think we get their best shot because he's on the sideline Hairston that's a two just inside the yard that's a true freshman he's not in order to be here is he Tim that's a, actually a three-pointer it's his second three 12 to 11, Southern Illinois. Rattling at home, Nick Valdez. Young Californian. One of the junior college players you were mentioning from Northeastern Junior College. Well, that was a mistake to leave and double down off of Valdez. He's a 41% three-point shooter. Easy shot for him. German in traffic. 
Loose ball, pull down, and out to Brooks. Grazing the iron, some activity off the ball. That'll be a foul against the Salukis. It'll go against Sylvester Willis, his second. And Bruce Weber, a little unsure about that whistle. Hey, my guy was just trying to root him out. You can't call that. <laughs> Eleven oh eight remaining, and you see the story from the floor. Texas Tech shooting 42%, and the Salukis now rebounding a bit better as they make their move back into the game. But defensively, Eddie, I know you're you're satisfied with what you're seeing from Bruce Weber's well, team. I like the way Southern Illinois is building their defensive pressure out, trying to bother the guards uh, of Texas Tech, making it tough to make entry passes, making it tough to see open cutters to the basket. Emmett almost lost it on the inline. And then as he tried to save the ball, he Ouch. threw it, I believe, into the lower abdominal region, for lack of a better term. Family jewels. Yes, and I believe it's uh, going to take a little while for him to get over that. That's Brad Korn. Ouch, babe. And uh, the team from the heartland of America will make a uh, change as Roberts comes in for him. He'll get his breath back. It's funny, anytime you get hurt in that particular area, as tough as it is, you walk into the locker room or you go to the sidelines and there are a few people smiling at you. <laughs> Southern Illinois has a freshman backcourt uh, tandem on the court right now. Ellis lost it. And a foul coming from the backside. Darren Brooks, a freshman from St. Louis, picks up his first. Our tournament summary, the power conference is 18 and five, but the Missouri Valley doing well. Creighton already a winner. They were the automatic bid and the at-large entry. The Salukis winners of 26 games this year to garner that at-large berth. And the 12th seed over the five is the major story. First time in history in the NCAA tournament since the field was expanded to 64 in 1985 that three number 12s have advanced in the first round. I believe Ellis may well, have lost his uh, well, contact. Ellis then. goes up to rebound. Looks like he gets scratched right across the eye. Yeah. It's apparent to me that the balance in college basketball is, is greater than it's ever been. Yeah. You, can, you can just throw a blanket over five through 12 seeds. It's so equal and on a neutral court with different officials. Anybody beats anybody on a given night. Well, I was telling someone during the uh, break that we had from the afternoon session to the evening session, Eddie, that just because a team isn't on television regularly doesn't mean they're not very good. And I think a number of people see the fours and the five seeds with regular season television packages throughout the country, both on weekends and during the evenings. That's not necessarily true with the mid-major conferences. That doesn't mean these guys can't play. And that doesn't mean these guys don't learn to play teams that are on TV oh, yeah. a lot like Texas Tech. Nice. Roberts, soft hands, and the hang time over Ellis, the taller low post player, was very impressive. Quick hitting entry before they got to motion. Good back screen, uh, frees the player for an easy layup. Bad communication by Texas Tech, should have switched that screen. Chavis. Wide open for the trade. Not this time for Javis. Loose ball, another scrum. Guys on the deck, Kent Williams clears it for the Salukis. Brooks a little stop and go. Yes, and a foul. And Tim, that was almost an inadvertent screen by Roland Roberts to finish Brooks to the, uh, to free Brooks to the goal. Nice pitch ahead by Kent Williams. And look at Roberts screen off Chavis and freeze Brooks to the basket. Said, I'll give you the pick. I don't necessarily need the roll. Number one, Darren Brooks. One shot. Hairston takes the seat, and Belcher comes in for him, Marcus Belcher. Southern Illinois by one. 9.40 and counting in the opening half. 
Tim Brando along with Eddie Fogler and Charles Davis here in Chicago. And the uh, Saluki's beginning to warm up a bit after a very slow start. We'll stick to it in this by Kasim Powell. Wow, that, although that's the third shot Southern Illinois has blocked in the last two minutes. But as you said, Powell stays with it, comes back under the board, reverses it off the glass for two. Roberts, he's tough in there. They gave a double team that time and picked up the foul. Mike Wood with the call. Powell, who's a slasher, gets the shot blocked but stays at it once, twice, grabs it, comes back up under, reverses it off the glass for two. Andy Ellis going to struggle to guard Roland Roberts on the defensive end. Roberts is just too quick for Ellis. Roberts, a transfer from Virginia Tech out of Potomac High School in Woodbridge, Virginia, had some problems at Virginia Tech. He's a... Uh, and an alleged rape case was suspended from the uh, the team, but after a judicial review board decided to uh, censure him for misconduct, the investigation cleared him, criminal investigation cleared him because of lack of evidence. Nice rejection. I'll tell you something else. When, when they took a look at bringing Roberts into Southern Illinois, they took a long look and talked to him about the second chance he would get. And there's no second chance there for Powell. That was smacked out of bounds. You can feel the crowd getting behind Southern Illinois, but Powell stays right there with it. Let's out a bit of a yell afterwards. He has eight, 19 to 18. You can see Ellis not guarding Roberts on the perimeter. It's an outlet. Anytime Southern Illinois wants to reverse the ball, Roland Roberts will be available. Dearman a pull up. Headshot. Nick Valdez. Emmett creating space. Valdez is open for three. Off the top of the board, Roberts retrieves it. Williams for three. Twelve lead changes so far, Eddie, 22 to 20. And Kent Williams, Southern Illinois' best three-point shooter, when he gets his feet set and a good look at the hoop, he can knock down threes. And Roland Roberts, excellent defense on the post. Williams working on Emmett. There was some contact with the help from Ellis. Out of bounds to Texas Tech. Saluki's crowd. Wanted a foul, not this time. Bob Knight talking defense with Valdez. They go to halftime and we go back to Chicago. Southern Illinois and Texas Tech, a two-point game there. Tim Brando and Eddie Fogel. Belcher's shot is too strong, pulled down by Storzinski. In this game, it's been pretty obvious that other than Kasim Powell, not many Red Raiders have been able to create off the bounce. There's the foul. Clear out against Ellis. A push. That's his first. Well, in Belcher, Hairston, and Brooks, Southern Illinois has three guards who can get up into you up on the defensive end of the court, making it very difficult to put the ball down. Outside of Powell, everybody else is struggling to beat him off the dribble. I've talked to a lot of guards in the past, Eddie, that have told me, you know, my toughest matchup is when I go against a guy that can get underneath me. And in this game, you've got five players on the floor for Southern Illinois that can get underneath every Red Raider. And uh, that motion offense that Coach Knight runs does not particularly like that type of physical defense, Tim. One team going tall, the other small. Particularly in the case of Texas Tech, where Kasip Powell at 6'7", gets four assists a night. That's a walk. An extra step against uh, Powell Storzinski and uh, it's growing a bit more frustrating for Robert Montgomery Knight. 
Ashton comes out of the game and back in is Tyrese Bowie. It's another one of those sort of wing players with bounce and a quality defender. Well, Coach Weber has gone deep into his bench already. He has Deerman and Roberts on the bench again and, and certainly playing very well without both. His two best players. Salukis have just been unable to score. They've missed some open shots. Bowie just in. Bowie's his offense. <laughs> And Southern Illinois continues to build out the defensive pressure and Chavis is struggling trying to go by and even making the entry pass. Brad Korn coming up to give some help picks up the foul. Wednesday night on a new survivor don't miss the first 10 minutes when the castaways lives will be turned upside down. Then stay tuned for incredible adventure on the amazing race. It all begins at 8 7 central Wednesday here on CBS. Tim, if I was Texas Tech, when the Southern Illinois had their three-guard lineup in, which they do now, I would take Kasee Powell and try to post him up in low against one of those smaller guards. He's 6'7", he's long, and that would be a great advantage for Texas Tech to look to, to work on. Williams corrals the long rebound. Marcus Belcher in the game operating at the point. The senior from Mexico, Missouri. It's a 12-4 run, 12-5 run for the Salukis. Largest lead of the night. Now we have a five-man motion with no true low post. Nice back door. Williams, he gets a lot of his points that way. Well, Tim, no low post opens up the basket. Back doors are available. 26-21. Looking Belcher get after Chavis. Pulled down by Bowie. <laughs> Willis cut off by Storzinski. Nice patience by the Salukis, probing and searching for that wide open look. Five on the shot, Williams off the front iron, pulled down by Chavis. Look at that, no field goals for five minutes, a scoring drought for the Red Raiders. Ellis ends the drought. He has nine on the night. Well, you need a hoop and your 6'11 center bangs down a three, that's unusual. Not just post up, but a little face up from the big fella. Down by two. Jonah. Southern Illinois with a two point lead, and they've really done it with Dearman and Roberts not scoring in their front court, but the back court, Eddie, has really been effective, and they've taken away a lot of the drives short of what we've seen uh, the Texas Tech's been able to come up with, courtesy Kasip Powell, little else. Absolutely, and on the defensive end of the court, they really are beginning to bother Texas Tech mentally, particularly the guards, as Chavis is struggling to find the open lane to make the, the assist pass to the scorers for Texas Tech. Loose ball, and it belongs to Texas Tech. Possession arrow will be for Southern Illinois when we come back. A little scrambled egg in front of Bobby. Charles Davis here in Chicago, Texas Tech in Southern Illinois. The Texas Tech Athletic Director, Gerald Myers, brought Bob Knight to, to Texas Tech this year to coach his basketball team. I asked him, how would, how would Coach Knight fit in Texas Tech? He said his wife said that he would fit very well here. I asked him why. He said because West Texans love discipline, they love dedication, they love ethics, they love people who are stick to the task and work hard at what they do. They figured that's why Coach Knight would be a perfect fit for Texas Tech and West Texas. Discipline, that's what it's all about. And uh, we certainly have seen in the past in the NCAA tournament that Bob is capable of cracking the whip. Two-point game, Southern Illinois in control of this game with their back court, but not getting the front court scoring that they're accustomed to from the likes of Dearman and Roberts. 
And again, the backcourt making a play here with a deflection. The value of hands, active hands, very effective defensively. Brooks just saved two points with that deflection. German. He created some separation to get that bucket. And that deflection was a four-point deflection, Tim. That was an obvious two points for Texas Tech, but instead Southern Illinois got two. Four-point play. Here's Powell posting up. They decided to try to post Powell up. And he gets the foul. As uh, with the double team, Tyrese Bowie was there, but the foul coming from the backside as you look at our game summary. Sylvester so Willis got that foul. The rebounding story has balanced out quite a bit since the beginning of the game. The Texas Tech hit a drought, a scoring drought of better than five minutes, which allowed Southern Illinois to get a lead of his, at one time, as high as five. Kasip Powell, very impressive player, an outside slasher from the perimeter, 6'7", long arms, can post up, and Tim, I cannot believe this stat, 120 assists and only 24 turnovers. I had to go over to the SID at Texas Tech yesterday, and I said, excuse me, this is going to be a dumb question, is that stat right? Would you please tell me if that's correct? That's a 6 to 1 assist error ratio, that's basically unheard of for any basketball player, let alone a 6'7". Well, their 18.6 assists per game is fourth most out of the 64 teams in this NCAA tournament field. Well, I thought that, that stat was a misprint, quite honestly. Hairston inside Dearman. Nice move. Boy, Hairston with a great entry. Well, there's a young man who wasn't highly recruited. True freshman. He's one big-time player. The Missouri Valley already a win earlier today. Creighton shocking Florida at the buzzer in double overtime. The Salukis of Southern Illinois trying to become the second Missouri Valley team to come away with a win in the 2002 NCAA tournament, leading by four over Texas Tech. And the pressure has been relentless defensively, particularly in the perimeter, Eddie. These guards of Southern Illinois are just eating up the guards of Texas Tech. They are quick and powerful. Chavis feeling the pinch from Williams. Shot clock at two. He's got to pump it. The iron unkind, but there for the following is Mikey Marshall, sophomore from Tulia, Texas. 30 to 28. Marshall's first basket. And a steal. And the quick foul given up by Belcher. Nice work by Chavis to come away with a pick. Two-shot foul coming. The clock is running down. Chavis has to get one up, but the weak side rebound is there. Nobody blocks Marshall out. Easy deuce. Chavis at the stripe. Tim, you got to like Chavis' uh, decision-making. 110 assists to only 42 turnovers. Again, when I was coaching, we always asked our guards, we said, if you can play this game, if you can make decisions, you should always have at least two assists to every turnover. Well, uh, Bob Knight accustomed to motion. Has uh, seen it on the uh, receiving end tonight from Southern Illinois as well. One-point game, just over 35 seconds remaining. A shot clock differential for this possession right at five seconds. Bob Southern, I play for the last shot, try to get one up with about two or three seconds to go. Hope I can tip it in and certainly got to have defensive balance with the five second differential, differential so you don't give up an easy basket should uh, Texas Tech rebound the ball. Marshall comes out for the bump and that should put uh, Southern Illinois at the line for a one and one. And Bob Knight gives uh, Gene Manji a long look. First personal, seven, eight, Relatively five, composed. He did get a little upset with uh, Valdez a bit earlier from a defensive point of view. But uh, I think in general, he's just uh, enjoying the game a bit more and more composed. Although you never know it. at any moment things could change with Bob. Well, not a good foul. Kent Williams, their best shooter, a 74% foul shooter. 
Going to bang home here another one, 14.2 seconds. Southern Illinois will build out their pressure, try to make it very difficult for Texas Tech to advance the ball up quickly and then play good, solid defense. From Mount Vernon, Illinois, about three hours south of Chicago, a lot of family here to watch Kent Williams play against Bob Knight's Raiders. Thirty-two twenty-nine, Southern Illinois leading by three. That's the big problem for Bruce Weber when you look at the way his club has played, just the inability to finish. They've certainly had open looks, and defensively they've dictated tempo in the game. Well, and they've built confidence here. These lower seeds, Tim, when they can play the higher seeds early and stay in the game, psychologically it's a great advantage for the lower seeds because they believe coming in, but now they know that they can beat the higher seed. Coming up at halftime on Singular at the Half, Greg and Clark will take you around the NCAA tournament with live look-ins, scores, and highlights all coming up on Singular at the Half. Last shot time for Texas Tech. Out there and out of bounds. Southern Illinois with 1.1 remaining. Have to go the distance with this pass. I'd put somebody on the ball. He gets a good look. Dearman from midcourt. Oh! That's the end of the first half. Off the back iron. Texas Tech trails Southern Illinois by three. The Salukis try to become the second Missouri Valley Conference winner of the day here in Chicago. Let's go to Charles Davis with Bruce Weber. Charles? Coach, the first half, looks like you were guarding them pretty well for a while. What adjustments will you look to make in the second half? Well, that's our whole thing. The score's where we want it. If it's a smooth game, their motion going smooth, we're going to be in trouble. We've, we've really disrupt, disrupted their motion. we got to keep our ball pressure. Now we got to do it on the other end where the coaches aren't here yelling at them on this end. So that we've broke down in second half. So hopefully we can continue to do that, and we can't foul. we got to keep them off the free throw line, and let's get to the free throw line. All right, thank you, Coach. How about that intensity? Clark Kellogg and Greg Gumbel coming up. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of NCAA Men's Basketball Championship will continue after this word from your local CBS stations. And welcome back to our studios. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg at halftime of Southern Illinois and Texas Tech with SIU leading the Red Raiders by a score of 32 to 29. And Clark, you've been talking about how well these Salukis do play the game. They really do a nice job at both ends of the floor. Both of these teams are motion offensive teams. You see the leading scorers, Powell and Williams, respectively. Texas Tech has to do a better job of handling the ball. They've had a couple of turnovers in that first half that cost them. Bob Knight on the short end of the score. Knight has been sent home from the tournament in the first round four of his last six times in it. In uh, Dallas, Texas, McNe King of Queens here on CBS. Well, here at the NCAA tournament, we've got Big Bob. And we'll return to Chicago after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching Big Bob and CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA championship. Go Amco. CBA Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Chevy Trucks. CBS Market Watch. Midas. And by Miller Lite. Tim Brando, Eddie Fogler, and Charles Davis back in Chicago. We're at halftime. Southern Illinois with a three-point lead over Texas Tech. And the flow of the game would indicate, Eddie, that the game is closer for Texas Tech than one might think. Well, I, I would agree. Southern Illinois controlled this first half. They held Texas Tech to 37% from the floor. Texas Tech only had five assists, eight turnovers, Tim. And Andre Emmett, their leading scorer, only has a deuce. Marcus Belcher will trigger the inbound pass to Kent Williams. You know, you heard Bob Knight yesterday talking to us about how as, as a basketball man he appreciates the way the Salukis play the game. I think Williams, Kent Williams, number 33, embodies what Knight really loves in a player. That shot won't go. And there's a foul. Texas foul Three-point game, Bell Southern Bell Illinois Bell dominant Bell in the first Bell half, but not knocking down enough Bell shots, Bell only lead by three. But defensively, they've really taken the game to the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Dearman with a jump stop. 
Well defended by Valdez. Too strong, pull down by Andre Emmett. You see the story, Powell with 10, Williams with nine. Going back to the point we were making about Kent Williams, number 33 for the Salukis. You see Powell make his move. Stays with it, Dearman clears. Kent William, Williams reminds me of sort of a Joe Hillman, Dan Dockage type of player. Guys that were favorites for night back in Indiana. Nice, high-low pass, Dearman to Roberts. Only a minute into the second half, and the largest lead of the game for the Salukis of five. Valdez running the curl, gets it out to Emmett. Emmett's a streaky shooter, and any time in a game, he can begin to light you up. Moments ago, our Charles Davis spoke with Bob Knight coming out of the locker room. Coach, you had Kasim Powell had 10 points in the first half. Looked like he's working well inside. Any adjustments off your motion offense to get him more touches? Well, what I th what has impressed me most is how hard the Southern Illinois kids have played. I think they just played harder than we have, and I think that's the biggest difference right now. Thank you, Coach. Underneath, and the foul will go against Ellis. You see the quickness and the size disadvantage turned into an advantage. That first and second step, very impressive. Just over 90 seconds gone in the second half, and uh, Bob Knight realizes that it's an uphill challenge matchup-wise. Tim, there's nothing worse a coach can say than to say the opponent is playing harder than his team. I would hate to have been in that locker room at halftime. Yeah, you bet. Very glib and candid, and for that man, Bruce Weber, really an antithesis in many ways to Bob Knight, a career assistant and a guy that even acts like an assistant today, though he's a head coach. When he goes on the road, he takes a shopping cart and makes sure he gets the candy bars and whatnot to make sure the team is well fed and uh, helps clear the baggage off the conveyor belt at the airports. Very humble man, Bruce Weber. Valdez, a runner, wave it off. Ellis inside the cylinder, and that will get Knight off the bench. Nice curl cut, easy basket. Here we go, we watch the curl cut by Valdez. He comes off the curl to the basket, misses a fairly easy shot. Ellis over the hoop, close call. I thought it was a good basket. I agree with Knight. I think he's got a case. Finger roll does not go. Dearman on the offensive boards. Loose ball collected by Valdez. Southern Illinois much quicker to the rebounds than Texas Tech here today. Chavis starting the second half as Mikey Marshall on the floor, and there's Kasip Powell. Too strong. That shot's got to fall for Texas Tech. Williams. Oh, what a pass. What a pass. Dearman the hoop. But Williams the dish. Drive, dish, and deliver. Nick Valdez off a curl cut. Takes the ball to the basket. Roland Roberts comes over. Bothers the shot. Weak side. Ellis dunks. Good basket, Tim. Here it is again, off the board, he comes off the rim, that's a good basket. Mike Wood, an excellent fish, and I think blows the call. It looks like Coach Knight is not very happy about it. And what's worse yet, Kent Williams down the other end, dishes to Dearman, and it's actually a four-point mistake. Yeah, it's a four-point swing, and um, Bob's still uh, letting them know about it. But I'll say this, uh, it was a quick eruption, and then it was back to business. 37-29, the issue here clearly is the fact that uh, Southern Illinois is taking it to them from a defensive standpoint. And Dearman gets the foul for Southern Illinois. That's his second. And are really reacting to the rebounds much quicker as well. One of the things we noticed in the first half, Eddie, three, count them three, Powell, Ellis, and Emmett all played 20 minutes. So there are more options. Clearly, the Saluki's the deeper team. If it's a high wire act at the end, fatigue could become a question for Texas Tech. Hey, 
Texas Tech 0 for 8 in the second half. They've yet to make a field goal. And we've played almost three and a half minutes. Some good help defense from Ellis. And now from Sheamus, he gets the pick. And a foul against Southern Illinois. Don't forget rotation four coming up tonight. Sienna, Rob Lanier's team won their way in in the opening round in Dayton. They'll take on Maryland. Ole Miss UCLA, that's a classic 8-9 matchup. Murray State against Georgia, that one coming later here in Chicago. And Boston College, another very dangerous 11 seed against Texas. Tim, Texas Tech is 0 for 8, but they have not had a good look at the basket this half. Every time a Tech player catches this, there's pressure on the ball. Hands up, trying to make passes tough into the post. Well, we're trying to go alley-oop, and again in the passing lane, Stetson Hairston to Belcher. Nice. That quickness, Eddie, it's really becoming obvious now. Powell, a pull-up. Tough shot. Tell you, he stays with it. Because Sip Powell is as advertised. He's the only Tech player here tonight who offensively has gotten going. Everybody else has been shut down. Andre Emmett really struggling to get shots. Nathan Doubtney will come in on the next dead ball for the Red Raiders. Oh, a pass off the ball. Oh, oh, oh. Roberts. No question. That was a pass, a bank pass, if you will, from Brad Korn. And Corn's a poppin' with that pass. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever seen oh. that, Eddie. I don't know that I've ever seen that kind of a pass, and it truly was a pass. Roland Roberts just swatting balls away inside. Roberts swatting it away again. Big time basket that time for Texas Andy, Tech and Andy Ellis. He has 11. You talk sometimes about games, a half-court grinder. This has turned into a root canal for Texas Tech. Southern Illinois' depth has done a very good job here today. Their bench has played very well. Look at that, 18% in the second half. I mean, every shot is contested. Watch this one, Eddie. Here's Korn throwing the ball up to Roberts. Off the board, it's a pass. Roberts goes up and scores. Unbelievable. I recall you saying a few moments ago you create open shots for Southern Illinois by driving, drawing, and dishing the 3Ds. Well, for Bruce Weber, his style and his approach to the game as a head coach is about defense, dedication, and discipline. And that's what he's getting from his Salukis, and that's the difference in this game. And Tennessee Tech, uh, excuse me, Texas Te uh, Tech is having a hard time dribble penetrating to dish, Tim. They cannot beat the Salukis off the dribble. Well, you Carolina guys always stay together, don't you? I mean, a little Jeff Lebo time warp for you there. My man. I'll allow you. <laughs> and a great season before Murray State took them out. You'll see them later here in Chicago. Kasip Powell going after the loose ball, but it's pulled out by Korn. Jermaine Dearman is so active out here today, he's getting his hands on every rebound. Dearman falling away. I believe Weber wanted to foul, did not get it. Now here's, here's Powell being guarded by Brooks. They ought to post Kasi Powell up. Look at that, Powell and Ellis. And after that, very little, if anything, from Texas Tech offensively. Doudney, well, he's a good shooter. That's why he's on the floor. Nathan Doudney, freshman from Rockwell, Texas. Rockwell. Uh, you make a wrong turn between Dallas and the Louisiana line, you could wind up in Rockwall. I have, coming from Six Flags a time or two. He originally committed to Tulsa, did Dowdy. Bowie, a runner. And on this end, Southern Illinois really can good. beat the Te Texas Tech Red Raiders off the dribble. Seven minutes deep and an eight-point lead for Southern Illinois. Emmett. That foul will 
be a block against Korn, who's on the deck. One Second of the foul against him. One of the few times today Andre Emmett no, no, was able to put it down and get to the hole. If, if uh, Texas Tech's going to win here today, he's got to get going. He's got to get more touches and attack the glass, much like that possession. For Texas Tech, Andre Emmett. Two shots. Bobby Knight's teams generally get to the line more than their opponents. They get uh, more free throws made than their opponents attempt. So certainly they need to live at the line in the second half, but it's been most difficult in tonight's game. As you see, Kent Williams making his way to the bench. Belcher back on the floor along with Darren Brooks just entering number one for the Salukis. Again, Southern Illinois' depth has played very well here today. They look much more like a fresh team here. Andre Emmett is one for 10 from the floor. He had better come out of the gates in the second half. Southern Illinois leading by 7, 43 to 36. 12, 48 remaining. Dearman has been a real problem for Texas Tech to match up with any time he gets the pass. He can beat you off the bounce. He's done it in a post-up situation. Right now, Andy Ellis has his hands full. There he is. A little double-team action to help him that time. Corn from deep. Loose ball taken by Brooks in a fresh 35. Southern Illinois continuing to get loose balls, getting their hands on rebounds, coming up with extra possessions. Brooks, oh, oh, oh. that in-between game, it's a lost art. Well, Tim, there's a redshirt freshman. More young men on a red shirt when they're not ready maturity-wise to play as true freshmen. He still has three years left after this year. That was a good move to redshirt his freshman year. And it still can't get one to drop. He's one for 11. Dearman again. Oh, oh, oh. Beating the Red Raiders down the floor. Just a step ahead. Largest lead of the night. 47-36. Bowie in the passing lane picks up the foul with ball denial against Kasip Powell. Southern Illinois foul number four by Rich Bowie. Here we see Brooks driving the baseline, pulling up the short mid-range game, knocks it down. And Dearman has been devastating. Timeout. You look at our game summary, one of the major stories, rotation as it affects Bob Knight. He's gone to his bench and he's using players that get very few minutes by comparison to the likes of Will Shavers. Well, Southern Illinois guards are dominating Texas Tech guards. Dodney and Marshall are on the court. They can't handle this pressure. He needs to come back with Will Chavis, in my opinion. Ronald Ross, number 24, being dogged, almost turned it over there. But when Knight is disappointed in defense, you may sit, and you may sit for a long, long while. And of course, Tim, they're coming off that 40-point loss to Kansas as well. Yeah, their confidence had to have been shaken somewhat. Although Bob Knight, uh, with time, there are many coaches out there that would love to have the knowledge to prepare a team after that kind of loss. I think he pretty much wanted it to end and end quickly and move on to the, the next game. The accomplishment of this team to go from nine wins to 23 is pretty incredible and one would think they could dismiss that kind of loss because it was kansas well you would like to think so but you never know how coaches and players react after blowouts that's an unnecessary foul there by texas tech they're getting more frustrated as each possession moves forward uh, Dalton picked up his first here's still with a double pick high Dump down to Roberts. Good things happen when he generally gets it there. Like that. 49-36, the lead of Baker's Dozen for the Salukis. And the crowd from Carbondale and some from nearby Chicago getting behind their team. 
Texas Tech struggling to make passes against the Saluki pressure. Ross. Emmett, well, maybe that'll get him off the schneid. He gets a tip in hook. Just five points, only his second field goal of the night. We've hit the 10-minute mark in the second half. Oh, oh, oh. Dearman is just too good Jermaine, down there. Dearman. Jermaine Dearman doing it on both ends of the court. That looked like a tired shot for Emmett. Grazing the front iron. Brooks. Uh, Roberts got caught slapping that one away. That'll be a foul against Roland Roberts, his third. In the last half dozen years, first round losses have been the rule rather than the exception for Bob Knight, but those years were at Indiana. Refreshing breath of new Texas air for Bob Knight this season, but a club that clearly overachieved and with a new system, First trip through the conference, I believe the conference had to adjust tonight. It's very difficult to prepare for a Bob Knight team the first time. The more you play against them, the more better chance you have. And Dearman jumps in the passing lane and takes it to the hole. Look at him stay with it. Wave it off the foul prior to the shot. And Doudney picks up his second. Jermaine Dearman going to jump in the passing lane, deflects it, runs the ball down. Now it's a foot race to the basket. Ellis can't cut him off, but he blows the easy layup. He stays after it. He's very active today and draws the foul. He ought to be late for more meetings, Tim, the way he's today. Yeah, well, the disciplinary action only took him out of about, oh, 90 seconds to start the game. He, he and Roberts were late for practice in Carbondale on Tuesday. There's a steal by Emmett off the inbounds. Out to Kasip Powell. Too strong, staying with it. Run down by Valdez, and Chavis is back on the floor now for Bobby Knight. Struggling to get good looks at the basket, Texas Tech. This Southern Illinois defense is eating the Texas Tech offense off. Ellis pops up for the three, and again, another tired shot. An air ball out of bounds. It belongs to Texas Tech in a first 35. Southern Illinois, Tim, is one well-conditioned basketball team. They continue to pressure the ball. They do not get beat off the dribble. They do not give up passing angles. Texas Tech cannot get a good look. This game is coming down here to where Southern Illinois is completely dominating it from start to finish. Now the ball definitely did not hit the rim. It was clearly a, an air ball. And a holding call on the inbounds. That's foul will go against Marcus Belcher. Second foul on Belcher. I, I can't remember the last time that uh, Emmett was out of the game, uh, or you know, two or three of the Texas Tech players. Oh, Ellis. Ellis. Or, or Ellis, they look very, very tired to me. Well, they played 20 minutes. Oh, First half. Roberts, boy, as if he were shot out of a cannon. Get that weak stuff out of here. It's got to be one of the most athletic players in the Missouri Valley Conference. His 84th block of the year. again. He's got Belcher with him. Back action. They're bringing down the house at the United Center. Roberts again. Flow of the game all with the Salukis. And it's Bruce Weber, the longtime assistant, that's the maestro in this matchup coaching-wise. He's pulling all the strings. Loose ball, Belcher. Shot clock down to 10. Kent Williams lost it. Nice play by Chavis. Right when Texas Tech needed it. 
That ends a tremendous run. And that's the first easy basket of the second half for the Texas Tech Red Raiders, Tim. Five of 20 from the floor in this half. Texas Tech needs more steals and more easy baskets if they're going to get back in this basketball game. And a 30-second timeout taken by Bruce timeout. Weber. Mike's team in the midst of a stress test, and it's even affecting the veteran coach. Ro Rowan Roberts running the ball down, giving it up, getting it back, and slamming it home for two. He's just been everywhere, Eddie. Active, active, Dearman, active, active. They've outquicked Texas Tech's big people. The guards have dominated Texas Tech's big people. This game is totally under control right now for the Salukis. Southern Illinois was one of only 17 teams out of 324 that won 26 games this season. Only 10 have won 27 games, which Southern Illinois probably will tonight. Yes, and a foul. Here's Kent Williams faking up, penetrating, going up, dishing it off. Dearman up and under, completes and gets fouled, gets to the foul line for a three-point opportunity. Kind of goes back to halftime. It was a three-point game. You and I were talking. Texas Tech was fortunate to be only down by that many at that time. Now we've seen the end result. So many players for Texas Tech playing a lot of minutes. Fatigue has begun to set in. that the Missouri Valley is faring well in this tournament. Look at the list of recent upsets in the NCAA tournament. You once coached there at Wichita State. It's a heck of a league, and Doug Elgin, who's on the committee, has got to be proud of both Creighton and Southern Illinois today. Well, there's no place in the Valley where you go where you have an easy game, Tim. When I coached at Wichita State, every game was a competitive game, and in my opinion, the conference has just gotten better each and every year as well. Something to remember. A former member of the Missouri Valley is Tulsa. And, of course, they went to the Sweet 16 in both 94 and 95 back when they were members. And uh, so the great basketball has always been played in the MVC. Kent Williams picks up the foul. Two fouls on Williams. You know, Davis has been getting an earful all night long. Traditionally, when Bob Knight teams have uh, gotten behind, they're not pressing teams. It'd be nice to see if they could come out here and put some pressure, maybe even do some trapping to see if they can get some easy baskets against this Saluki offense. Valdez, young man from California, junior college, was recruited by Pat Knight very, very late in the recruiting period. He was about to sign with Gonzaga or Utah State. And he wanted to play for Bob Knight, and uh, Pat knew that and was able to bring him in. 55-41. Dearman, right in the middle of a double team. Just lost the handle, but again saved it. So quick. Even when Dearman's in trouble, he seemingly gets out of it with his quickness. Shot clock at seven. Brooks with one on the clock, off the iron, and the follow, Dearman again. Largest lead of the night, Chavis gets the contact as he takes it to the hoop. Count the basket, that ball was inside the cylinder. The clock running down, Brooks spinning, trying to get a decent shot up, flips one up, and Dearman continues to be the most active player on this basketball court, as the ball kept alive and he tips it in the hole. Here, here it is, he tips it, and he gets it in the basket. He's a quick jumper. He's quick at everything. Quick twitch. <laughs> Under six minutes to play right now. You could extend your half-court defense, even if you don't press, which is what they're doing. And the foul will go against Valdez, trying to check uh, Kent Williams. Well, our CBS Sports Line stat of the game, Southern Illinois on 24 field goals, 18 dishes. Get complete tournament coverage at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online, enter keyword CBS Sports Line. By the way, that 18 is the number that Texas Tech averages per game. So it's been returned to sender when it comes to assists.
This has been quite a performance so far for the Southern Illinois Salukis. Unselfish on the offensive end, tenacious on the defensive end, totally dominating Texas Tech. Dearman's quickness again. Boy, in Valdez, you can really see the frustration. Chavis picks up the foul. Dowdney will come in. 5.38 remaining. Number 12, they conduct a return for Texas Tech. Marcus Belcher. Dearman at the line. For Southern Illinois. Eight double doubles on the year. There are times that Bruce Weber said that uh, he's too active, too quick. <laughs> well, tonight he's been just quick enough. Too quick for Texas Tech. Cassette Powell. Nice drive to the basket. Right past Kent Williams. Clearly, Powell is going to have to have a great last five and a half minutes for the Red Raiders to get back in it. Hairston, baseline taken away. Williams in traffic. Pulled down by Ellis. Bad shot by Kent Williams. Should have reverse dribbled out and try to get a better opportunity than that forced jumper on the baseline. Emmett, who only has two field goals on the night, to doubt me for three. Instant offense. Dowdney now with five. Southern Illinois needs to be much more patient now on the offensive end of the court. Scoring time favors them greatly. There's no need to rush. Conversely, Texas Tech has got to look for some steals to get some easy baskets on the other end. High pick and roll. Ball was tipped away. I think uh, Emmett thought there had been a deflection. You look at our east bracket, the lower half. Texas Tech looking to advance. They'll play the winner of Georgia Murray State. North Carolina State a winner today against Michigan State. And UConn in the other half of the bracket. Williams hammered by Chavis. Nice pick and roll. Williams comes off a Deerman screen, gets into the lane and gets fouled. The pick and roll was not handled very well Texas by the Red Tech Raiders. Foul, Third foul Third on Chavis. And Williams to the strike. Here's a young man who doesn't run real fast, jump real high, not particularly athletic, but he's one heck of a basketball player. It's called savvy, Tim. Yeah. And again, that's one of the reasons I think Knight talked about how he enjoyed watching Southern Illinois play. I think this guy embodies all that Bob Knight loves in a college basketball player. Absolutely. Here's a young man who can play for anybody because he knows how to play the game and he can really shoot the ball. Uncharacteristically misses both, but guess who gets the rebound? Yep. Dearman. And a three. Well, why miss two? Yeah, you miss two when you come back and get three. Ellis. Quick jam for Texas Tech. One of the problems for Southern Illinois, and Texas Tech may try putting them at the line right now, they're the second worst free throw shooting team in the entire tournament. They average only 62% at the strike. So if Texas Tech decides to foul and put them on the line, it could be like a turnover. And it, baseline was free, and that's a no-no. Bruce Weber won't like that. Suddenly, it's a nine-point game. Bruce looking to take a timeout here to get his team under control. I think he wanted a timeout, but the foul was committed just before he was granted the timeout. And Javis gets his fourth. So a bit of a break for Weber. Powell driving to the hole, dishes it off to Emmett, slam for two. Easy basket for Andre Emmett. He has had very few good looks all night. Marcus Belcher at the free throw line. 73% for him, so he's one of the better free throw shooters the Salukis have. Oh. You don't want the iron unkind at this stage when you're getting freebies. Just what I was thinking, Coach Brando. <laughs> Seven of 14 tonight. The Salukis have missed six in a row at the strike. Gets that one. Timeout. 341 left. The old assistant getting it done for now. Greg Gumbel in New York. Southern Illinois with a 10-point lead on Texas Tech, 341 to play. In Washington, they are under two minutes to play.
Wisconsin leading St. John's. Let's go back to Chicago, where Texas Tech is closing in on SIU. Tim Brando and Eddie Fogo. Tech, trailing by double digits much of this half, has made it a two-possession game late. And now they have extended the defense and the foul given. It'll go against Andy Ellis, who's had a big second half. It's been his work inside to tell Bob Knight's club get to within two possessions. The quickness inside, particularly of Jermaine Dearman and Roland Roberts, a real difference. And the guard play for Bruce Weber's club has really annoyed Texas Tech and Andre Emmett, who only has three field goals, and two of those were layups. See Kasib Powell coming into the game, replacing Ronald Ross for Texas Tech. Well, Belcher's free throw makes it a three-possession game now. Again, Southern Illinois must stay solid defensively. No gambling. Keep Texas Tech in front of you. They've got to make a contested shot from the outside. In his career, Bruce Weber was 18 and 19, assisting Gene Cady against Knight when he was in Indiana. Down the shot, not there. Ellis on the glass, and a reach-in foul against Southern Illinois. We'll go against Marcus Belcher. That's his third. Number two, Marcus Belcher. We talked about it at the very top, Eddie. Familiarity breeds contempt. And no coach of an 11 seed would better understand how to defend the motion offense of Bob Knight than that man. In fact, he runs it in his offense as well. Well, and I'm sure his mentor, Gene Cady, is watching closely and very proud of the effort tonight by Bruce Weber's team. Very good sub. Very good substitution. There's Bruce Weber's record uh, versus Indiana while he was an assistant at Purdue. Outstanding. Excellent substitution here. Brooks comes in for Roberts. Brooks is a 78% foul shooter. Southern Illinois now has four guards in this game to ball handle against the pressure of Texas Tech. And the quick foul given up by Chavis. Again, a reminder about Southern Illinois. They're a very poor free throw shooting team, 62% as a club. But here again, Eddie, is the difference in the double bonus or bonus. Absolutely. Two-shot foul. We're now situation substituting as Roberts comes, is going to come back in on the defensive end. Brooks at the foul line. He just came in for Roberts on the offensive end. 78% foul shooter. They put the ball in their best foul shooter's hands, perhaps besides Williams. You saw the end of the night for Chavis, his fifth foul. Two shots. Southern Illinois has struggled at the free throw line, particularly in the second half. But as you mentioned, getting Brooks in the game, very important. He's an all-conference MVP quarterback in high school and uh, a tremendous high school baseball player at Jennings High School in St. Louis, Missouri, Darren Brooks. Southern Illinois has their best defensive team on the court now, Tim. They might want to think about switching everything on the perimeter, not to give up the three-point shot. Three-point defense. Ross back in the game for Shevis. Finger roll won't go, but a foul underneath. See, that hurts. That's too quick. That doesn't take enough time off the clock. Southern Illinois' defense got beat off the dribble, and the clock didn't tick as much as Coach Weber would have liked it to. Brooks picking up the foul. Kent Williams will come in on the next dead ball with Ronald Ross at the line. Here we go. Offense for defense substitutions. Anytime Southern Illinois has the ball, they're going to have their best foul shooters on the court. If it's a dead ball, they're then going to substitute their best defensive players for their offensive players who don't guard as well. He missed them both, but Ellis kept it alive. Downey throws it up. Dearman clears. And elbows go flying, and a foul spotted. Will go against the Red Raiders and Andre Emmett. It's pretty obvious. I think there were a lot of people, Eddie, that felt that Bob Knight would have a tremendous crowd, a Big Ten crowd on his side, enamored with the star and legendary coach. But clearly, the upstarts from Carbondale, only six hours away from Chicago, have become really the darling of the dance at nighttime Absolutely. here in Chicago. Creighton had him going this afternoon. What, what, what really interests me, Tim, both Creighton and Southern Illinois have played like they knew they were going to win. They were not in awe. They did not have any fear about coming into this tournament. And four first-round losses. You know, I've always felt this way about those types of stats. You have to get there a lot 
to create those types of numbers, and he's been there many, many times. And how about this? We might have mentioned before, Bruce Weber in Southern Illinois beat Indiana this year. Absolutely. By the way, how good did they look? There's a turnover, double dribble against Emmick. Momentary lapse. He can't believe it. Here comes Corn back into the game. I tell you, he may have been a career assistant, but he was overdue for his opportunity as a head coach. And SIU begins to reign supreme here at the United Center. Any problems, Southern Illinois should use their timeouts. And that's needless fouling at this point, Tim. This game is over. Congratulations to Southern Illinois and Bruce Weber. Great win. Now we touched on it earlier. All those years coaching against Knight when Gene Cady was the head coach at Purdue. And remember, the Boilermakers had a few number one seeds, especially in the 90s. Three times they won the Big Ten in succession. Well, I think Gene Cady is a perfect example of an outstanding coach with a terrific record. Over, he's withstood the test of time, yet he's never made it to the final four. Yeah, that's four. right. So many great coaches have never tasted the final four party. You mentioned they beat uh, Indiana earlier in the year. The Salukis, they beat them by 12. Nice work by Powell. Counted in a foul. And again, Weber can't believe it. Last thing you want to do, stop the clock and give them a chance to get a free bucket. Here's Powell beating him off the dribble, using his left hand, getting across, and Roberts can't block it. And Weber cannot believe it. A, they gave up the basket way too quickly. The clock didn't run. B, they commit the foul to give up a three-point play. Two no-nos in one possession. Now, I don't know if he'll be picking up his bags on the conveyor belt. Uh, the so airport. I'm glad I'm sitting over here with you, Brando. That drove me nuts. <laughs> Belcher to inbounds. He has to call a timeout as Texas Tech picked up full court. 20.7 remaining. Our Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Jermaine Dearman from Southern Illinois. And I tell you, so much outside the box score he accomplished, particularly closing down Andre Emmett offensively. And Kasim Powell, who early in the game, was really the only guy that could get anything accomplished off the dribble against this much quicker Saluki's team. Texas Tech full court pressure, trying to deny, come up with the steal. They ought to look for threes and take a timeout. And a push. Foul will go against Ellis. Jack caught holding. The question has come up many, many times. Just what is a Saluki? What is a Saluki? Well, it's an Egyptian greyhound, Eddie. I'm glad you asked. And this is the 50th anniversary of the Saluki. In addition, and it goes all the way back to biblical times. There was a drought in the 1800s in northern Illinois, and a lot of people came down because the land was more fertile in the southern portion of the state. And they began referring to it as Little Egypt. In the biblical times, people came down for better crops and more fertile soil. And uh, the oldest purebred dog in the world is a Saluki. Well, I'm glad I'm here today to learn that. Thank you very much for enlightening me, Thank Kim you very much. I appreciate that. I'll tutor you more later. Okay. Doubt me from deep. Knocks down a three. Yet another Missouri Valley Conference team Carving some new history. Bruce Weber's club will advance in this NCAA tournament. Texas Tech chose not to use their timeouts, but did choose the foul. Two-shot foul here for Belcher. Southern Illinois taking all their players off the foul line so they can get back and protect against any quick break uh, that Texas Tech wants to use. And a remarkable year for Bob Knight, Eddie. And the year away, even he admits that uh, he enjoyed it. And... Uh, we talk about the perfect fit. Uh, I think that uh, new sweater does fit well in Lubbock, don't you? There's no doubt about it, Tim. It's unfortunate that he got beat here tonight, but it has been a great year for Texas Tech. It'll be interesting to see how good his ball club will be next year. Yeah, I think the question of staying power will be important as you see Powell take it to the rack, get the hoop, and yet again, more harm 
19 now in the game for Powell. Bruce told us yesterday he has not played zone all year, not one possession. I think he would have come out in a 2-3 zone here at the end of the game. <laughs> Well, let's see. The, the Salukis are an old dog. Sometimes it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. Well, he's a smart dog, but uh, he's got one heck of a man-to-man -man defense. I wouldn't play any zone either. Look at what we've got coming up. Ole Miss, UCLA, Siena, Maryland, Murray State, Georgia, Boston College, Texas. You know, in that Ole Miss-UCLA game that many will see, I'm of the belief that the quickness of Ole Miss's defense is incredible, but they really lack depth in their low post. And if Gadzurik, once if it becomes a half-court game and guys like Capono and Barnes and Gadzurik take over, then it becomes a mismatch the Bruins way. Well, for size and power, UCLA should dominate the game, but Ole Miss plays defense much like Southern Illinois. Right. They will get up into UCLA and make it very difficult for the Bruins to get good looks. Powell. Ellis. Rejected by Roberts at the end, a fitting conclusion. And the Missouri Valley Conference has done it again. Big time power conferences, SEC and Big 12 flame out, courtesy Missouri Valley Conference. You look at the brackets in the East, the Salukis advance and await the winner of Georgia and Murray State. Freddie Fogler and Charles Davis, Tim Brando, so long for now from the United Center in Chicago. The hits just keep on coming, Greg Gumbel. Back to you in New York. All right, Tim Brando, thanks very much. So from Southern Illinois' victory over Texas Tech, we take you to the final.